And I'll say this too, coach, when you talk about our time, when we were together, the two biggest threats in the AFC during our time was the Patriots and the Colts. And both teams had unbelievable quarterbacks. But what were the differences in game planning for those two teams featuring Tom Brady and Peyton Manning? Well, uh, and you usually would look at the offensive statistics going into a game, and you knew when you're going to have your hands extra full. And uh, the teams that you watch that reach the playoffs now and reach the championship, and when you look at the the heart and soul of them, there's a heck of a really good quarterback in there. And those two guys, uh, for sure, uh, were – two of the major reasons that those 10 teams won a ton of championships. And uh, uh, as far as preparation, I would always try to try to see what their uh, protections were. And the the important thing to me was uh, I didn't care what they were doing when they were 10 points ahead or 20 points ahead. I, I wanted to try to figure out if I could when they were, when their back was against the wall and they had to have a play, and most people in the whole stadium and on both sides of the field knew they were going to throw the ball, what were you going to get? What protection were you going to get? And when when you could identify what they had the most confidence in, then I would start looking at how did I tear that house down? And that was the protection that I wanted to beat. And if I if I had a fire zone I thought would beat it, I wouldn't run it until a situation got up when I thought in my mind, hey, these guys ain't playing around now. They got to have it, and I'm going to try to, you know, put put what I designed against it. And I'll tell you something. There was a lot of thought that went into all that, and sometimes it would work, and sometimes it didn't. But one of the things in coaching – when you had the responsibility of calling every snap, calling every defense, you're going to err. Uh, you're in, invariably going to err at some point in time because nobody calls the right defense that works right all the time. If they did, nobody would ever lose because the, the coach would always have the best defense and you'd win. And I, you can't believe, you can believe, because you've been in games where a play or two that you made or didn't make was, uh, in the end, one of the differences in the game. And you can't you can't sleep at night. You can't you mm-hmm. can, you don't rest literally until you can get back on the field the next Sunday and answer that. And and when you're calling the play and you're the coach, you have the same response if you care. And a coach should care as much as the players. And I've always been uh, one of my strongest beliefs. And I would have nights that were pretty tough every night that I know that I messed up and put my guys in a spot that, that hurt them instead of help them. You dare to help them. And what I what I learned to and part of my longevity, uh, I had uh, every reason in the world to call that defense at that time. I'd mm-hmm. given my thought, I'd put in my due process, and I'd studied the film, and I thought it was the best thing to do at that time. And when it blew up, it blew up, man. <laughs> you know, it wasn't like I just I shook up one of those magic eight balls and come up with, oh, well, let's call this, let's try that. So that was a, my process in in running the game, calling the defense, and uh, uh, I I would try to match up our best guys against their best guys and call the play that I thought would win at the most important part of the defense. I wish I'd been right more often, but I was right a few times. <laughs> 